Hey guys, welcome back. We're looking at getting remote access set up in this video. So accessing Home Assistant from your local network is no problem. You just type in that homeassistant.local colon 8123 or the IP address of your Pi colon 8123 and it's up and running. But what happens when you want to check on your system or control something when you're not connected to your home Wi-Fi? Well, there's a few different ways to do this, but there are two very popular options. A very easy one that'll cost you five bucks a month, or a slightly more difficult one which is a little less secure and requires you to forward some ports on your router, but it's free. Some people also like to set up a VPN connection to get remote access, but I'm going to keep it simple in this video and that's something that you can look into if you like. Let me show you how easy the first option is, and then we'll look at the second one. The first option is getting a Home Assistant Cloud subscription. Go to Configuration, then click the option at the very top of the list. This method will cost 5 bucks a month, but in my opinion, it's the way to go. The money supports the Home Assistant developers who provide this awesome software for free, and there are a couple other perks too. You don't have to open up any ports on your router, and this setup as well as the setup on your phone when you install the companion app takes literally seconds. Using Home Assistant Cloud also allows you to connect with voice assistants like Alexa or Google Assistant, which I don't do, but some of you may already have some of that infrastructure in place. So let's do this and then install the mobile companion app, which I'll be doing on an iPhone, and I'll show you how painless it is to go this route. The nice thing about trying the Home Assistant Cloud Connection, or Nabucasa, same thing, is you can start a free trial without any credit card info, just an email address. So sign up for the trial with an email address, and then when the email comes through, click the verification. Now sign in using the credentials that you just created, and you'll get a message saying your remote access is being prepared. Within a few minutes, you should get a notification saying that remote UI is ready, and you just toggle the slider on, and you're done. Now you've got this randomized URL that you can use to access your system when you're away from home. So bookmark this URL that you are assigned in that remote control section, and with this link, you should be able to access your Home Assistant install from just about anywhere with internet. Now we'll set up the mobile companion app as well. Make sure your phone is on your home Wi-Fi, and install the Home Assistant companion app. Run it, and it should detect your Home Assistant install. It found mine no problem, but if it doesn't, you can manually punch in your IP address of your Pi by writing HTTP colon slash slash, and then your IP address, mine is 192.168.1.99, and don't forget the colon 8123 at the end, and it must be in this exact format with the HTTP at the front and the port number at the end. So I'm just going to hit connect here, it's going to prompt me to log in. And after I do this, it's going to ask me about permissions. I'm just going to leave them as default. I've already allowed them. And then it's going to do some checks. It'll detect my Nabucasa account, and that's it. Now go into the app configuration, then connection, and turn on connect via cloud. Now we can test it by killing the Wi-Fi on our phone. The connection is going to drop when you do this, but just try refreshing, or if that doesn't work, restart the app and you should be good to go. You'll now have secure, simple remote access to your system from your phone, through this app, or from a computer that's not on your network just by visiting that remote UI link. You're going to notice a ton of new sensors that were introduced when you connected your phone through the app, and they all get automatically added to the managed default dashboard. This is why we're going to be creating a custom dashboard and deleting or hiding the default one so we can get rid of all the stuff that we don't care about like this. So that's option one. Let's go over getting remote access the other way using something called DuckDNS. I had some trouble getting this set up because my router doesn't support a certain feature called NAT loopback or hairpin NAT, but the method I'll go over here will have you covered whether you have that ability or not. We'll set things up so we can continue to access Home Assistant using HTTP when we're local and through HTTPS when we're remote. If you need a secure connection when you're local on your home network as well, this can be done very easily if your router does support NAT loopback, because you should just be able to visit the DuckDNS URL that we're going to create and have no issue, but it gets sort of complex if your router doesn't do NAT loopback, and you're probably going to need to install an add-on called DNS mask on your Pi, and point your devices at your Pi to get their DNS. More info can be found on this on the web if this is something that you think you'll need. To get the DuckDNS method to work, we're going to have to forward some ports on our router, and I'm sort of getting out of my element when it comes to network security, but I do know that opening up ports on your router isn't exactly ideal, it might not be the end of the world, but I'd suggest doing a little reading on the matter to decide if this method is secure enough for your liking. 
I've been running this method myself for a long time, and I'm sort of talking out of my b-hole here, but I'd say the majority of people using Home Assistant are probably using some variation of this DuckDNS method for their remote access. Okay, let's do this. So go to the add-on store and find one called DuckDNS and install it. Now go to duckdns.org and sign in with Reddit or Google or whatever. Pick a name or phrase that you'd like to use to access your system and enter it into this subdomain box. And add the domain. Now copy this address in bold right here on the yellow background and go back to your Home Assistant tab. In the DuckDNS add-on, go to Configuration, and where it says Domains Null, replace this with your URL. Formatting has to be exact here. Just double-click Null and replace it to make sure you don't disturb any spacing. Go back to DuckDNS and grab your token and copy it. Now come back and paste it into the token spot that also says Null as default. Now change the accept terms to true and save. Go back to the info tab and start the add-on. Next thing we're going to do is forward a port in our router. This part will differ for you depending on your router model. So if you don't know how to port forward on your router, just Google your router model name and port forwarding and you should be able to figure it out. Here's how I do mine. I go into firewall and then port forwarding. I'll select the device I want to forward to, which is my Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. And that's at this IP address for me. Then on the WAN side, I want to start and end forwarding at port 443. You might have just a single box to fill for this. It's going to be the same port uh, 443 for everyone though. This does not change. And then on the LAN side, we want to forward this port to port 443 as well. And this is going to be TCP protocol. All right, now go back to the add-on store in Home Assistant and install the Nginx Home Assistant SSL proxy. When it's done, go to the Configuration tab and paste in your DuckDNS URL. Save it and start the add-on. So here's how it's going to work. When you're on your home network, you're going to access Home Assistant the same way you have been by typing homeassistant.local colon 8123 or in the IP address of your Pi followed by colon 8123. But when you're not on your home network, obviously this is not going to work. So you're going to need to use your DuckDNS URL. So just to summarize and make it very clear, if you're at home on your network, log in with homeassistant.local or your IP address. And if you're off your home network, Use HTTPS and your DuckDNS URL to get access. And it is absolutely critical that you include that S when you're doing the DuckDNS URL. So it has to be HTTPS colon slash slash and not just HTTP because that won't work. So don't forget the S. Okay, let's set up the mobile app with this method. Make sure your phone is connected to your home network and run the app. For me, it scanned my network and it found my DuckDNS URL but clicking this isn't going to work. So you have to manually enter your IP address. So HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.99 colon 8123 for me. I'll hit connect and then log in. I'll just leave all the permissions as is. And then it will detect everything except for a Nabucasa connection this time. We still have to tell the app how to access our Home Assistant install when we're external though. So go to App Configuration, then Connection, and under Internal URL, write in HTTP colon slash slash your IP address for the Pi colon 8123. Under External, just write in HTTPS colon slash slash whatever your DuckDNS URL is dot DuckDNS dot org. And make sure that your home network SSID is present in the SSID section below, or the app won't know that it should be using its internal URL when you're connected to your home network. Regardless of which method you go, something to keep in mind is, if somebody gets a hold of your URL, whether it's the Nabucasa URL or the DuckDNS URL, they're going to be able to get to your login page. So another good step to take, 
and I'm stealing this from a home assistant YouTuber by the name of Juan M Tech, who I highly recommend. He makes some awesome content. But another step to take is to enable something called IP bands. So we can add this little snippet into the configuration section. I'm just going to go to the Home Assistant uh, page for HTTP, steal this whole block here, and then just trim it down so all that's left is IP ban enabled and login attempts threshold. So with this in place, if somebody tries to log into my system and gets the password wrong three times, their IP address is going to get banned and they won't be able to access the login page anymore. If something gets banned, you'll get a notification in Home Assistant saying that the login failed and that the IP address was banned. You can see the list of banned IPs if you go into your file editor and go to ipbans.yaml. If you accidentally ban yourself, then just change the IP address on the device that you're trying to access Home Assistant from, and then with your new IP address, you should be able to log in, and then under this IP bans file, just delete the IP that it got accidentally banned, save and restart, and it should be enabled again. There, we're done. Those are two solid ways to set up remote access for your Home Assistant system. Let's go over a couple more things and we're totally finished with setup. First, I want to show you how to use something called secrets that's going to help you protect your sensitive information so you can share your config files with other people without divulging passwords or GPS coordinates or whatever. If I have something in a configuration file, for example, coordinates, I can hide them by using secrets. All you've got to do is replace what you want to hide with exclamation mark secret and a label for what you're hiding and then go into your secrets.yaml file and write this label followed by a colon, a space, and the actual value that you're hiding. So now the config file is going to reference this secrets file and it gets the info that it needs and I can easily share my config file now without worrying about people seeing these coordinates. If you don't use the secrets file, then every time you share your configuration, you've got to go in and scrub it and make sure that you don't have any personal information in there. The last item to cover is going to take 30 seconds. We're just going to create a custom dashboard. Go to configuration, Lovelace dashboards, add a dashboard and call it whatever you want. If you want to give it a custom icon, you can do so by typing MDI colon whatever. MDI stands for Material Design Icons, and you can find them at materialdesignicons.com. You can search there for what you're after and then note the name of the icon and type it in after the colon to give your dashboard a custom icon. Home Assistant uses these material design icons throughout the software to let you customize the look and feel of things. We're going to set this dash as our default dashboard, and that'll hide the managed overview that comes stock. Now click your new dashboard. Click the three dots in the top right and click Configure UI. Set this little toggle to start with an empty dashboard and then take control. Hit this little plus sign to add a view. Give it a name. I'm just going to call mine Main for now and then save it. Now we'll add a card just to show you what this looks like quickly. We're going to do this in more detail later, but I'll add the weather forecast back because I like that. So I'll choose that card. And then maybe I want to show my phone battery percentage or some other cheesy data. So I could do something like a glance or an entity's card, which would both work. Whatever, that's good enough for now. We're going to make this look pretty when we get some real data on it. Well, I think that's it, guys. I think we're ready to go. I hope everything has gone smoothly for you so far. If it hasn't, feel free to post a question in the comments or... Even better, make a post in our forum at ledgardener.com slash forum. And from here, I would suggest checking out some videos on Node Red on YouTube. See if you can get a handle on the basics and fundamentals of it, because that's where we're going to be spending a lot of time when we start producing our garden automations, which is coming up next. So thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing to the channel if this stuff interests you, and we will see you on the next one.